Step two, set up your money buckets. This week, we're gonna introduce a new money management system that will simplify your finances so you can manage your money in just 10 minutes a week. But before we get into the nitty gritty details, let's just take a moment to think about money. Money in itself has no value. The value of money comes from the things it helps us achieve. All the money in the world won't make you happy. It's what you do with your money that makes you happy. So what are your top priorities with money? I'm gonna share with you my top three priorities. Yours might be different from mine, but whatever they are, you should be clear about what money can do for you. Your number one priority might be different, but here's mine. I wanna be totally financially secure. Being financially secure is so important because it alleviates a lot of stress from your daily life. If you've ever had to live payday to payday, maybe you're doing it now. You know how stressful it is when you're not sure where your next meal is coming from or how you're gonna pay for that repair your car desperately needs. The stress of financial insecurity affects all aspects of your life, especially relationships. One of the biggest causes of relationship breakdown is fights about money. Being totally financially secure takes all of that off the table. No stress about money emergencies in your case because you've got three months expenses in your rainy day account. No fights about money because you and your partner are on the same page and you know you're all sorted. For me, that's my number one goal. And I'd recommend you make it your number one goal too. My number two priority, Freedom to travel and enjoy nice dinners with friends and family. For me, life is about the journey. It's about good times with friends and family you make along the way. It's not about a hard, joyless slog through life, trying to preserve every penny along the way. I wanna enjoy my retirement, who doesn't? But I don't wanna sacrifice the other great experiences you can have along the way. The good news about the money management strategy you're gonna implement is that you're gonna be allocating a combined 20% of your income towards both short and long-term rewards for yourself while still working towards a financially secure future. My third priority is building wealth over the long term. We're all going to get old eventually. And when I get old, I'd like to be able to retire comfortably. Building wealth over the long term is a way to do that. And buying your family home is one of the best ways to start building long-term wealth. I have some good news. I'm not about to condemn you to a decade of two minute noodles and beans on toast in order to reach your financial goals. And I'm not gonna tell you to cut back on your daily latte or give up that smashed abba on toast. I'm not gonna turn you into that weird friend that calculates their share of the dinner meal down to the last cent. No one likes that stingy person. Instead, you're gonna be frugal. Being frugal means that you spend your money consciously on things that are important to you. Sure, you're gonna cut costs on things you don't need and becoming financially free will require some sacrifices. You can't have everything you want, but you need to be able to enjoy the journey along the way. That's why this system allows for a good chunk of change for you each month to spend on whatever you want completely guilt-free. Using willpower to force yourself to a rigid budget doesn't work. Willpower is a limited resource, and if we rely on willpower to keep your finances in check, you're setting yourself up for failure. Success lies in developing routines and habits that eventually become automatic and require less thought to maintain. That's why you're gonna ditch tracking everything and simplify your choices. We'll set up your money management on autopilot. From now on, your income will be split into three buckets. The first bucket will be your daily expenses. The occasional splurge and some extra cash to fight financial fires. The second bucket is your rainy day fund. Safety money for any financial emergencies that crop up. The third and final bucket is for long-term wealth. Investing and building long-term wealth and total security. The accounts that you set up earlier will be the basis for this new money management system. Your first bucket is for expenses and splurge money. This is the only bucket a lot of Aussies have. And it's one of the reasons why many people find it hard to save. When you use just one account for everything, the money just tends to evaporate. You might have some general idea about savings and investing, but when it's all in one place, the money just tends to disappear. It's time to change that. We're gonna put those accounts we set up in week one to work. From now on, your income is gonna be split four ways. All of your income should now go into your daily expenses account. Tell your employer in writing that you've changed bank accounts and would like 100% of your take home pay to go into this account. You should aim to limit your daily expenses to 60% of your take home pay. Daily expenses are things like food, housing costs, utility, fuel, all the things that keep the lights on and the belly full. We can break this down further. You should aim to spend a maximum of 30% on housing, either rent or a home loan, 5 to 10% on utilities, 5 to 10% on transport, 5% on insurance, and 5 to 10% on food. Now, this 60% is a guideline. Those on lower incomes or higher incomes might have slightly different figures, but in most cases, you should be able to keep your daily expenses within this limit. If not, it might be time to reevaluate your spending and see what you can cut down on. Now that we've covered your daily expenses, it's time to break down the other 40% of your income. And we'll start with the fun one, your splurge account. 
Set up an automatic transfer of 10% of your take home pay from your daily expense account into your splurge account. Your splurge account will have its own ATM card. Keep it at the front of your wallet and mark it splurge with a Sharpie. This is your guilt free spending money. Go out and blow this money on whatever you want. A new pair of shoes, a round of beers for your mates, whatever. The only rule for this money is when it's gone, it's gone. You can't cut it into your other accounts for your splurge money. Another 10% of your take home pay should be automatically transferred from daily expenses to your smile account or your online saver. This account is for big goals like holidays, weddings, and other fun things that will cost more than a few weeks wages. This 10% isn't set in stone. If you're saving up for something bigger like a wedding or a big overseas trip, do the numbers and see how much you'll need to put into your small account to make it happen. But if it's more than 10% of your take home pay, then you'll need to adjust your living expenses accordingly. Finally, 20% of your take home pay will go into your fire extinguisher account. You'll use your fire extinguisher account to put out any financial fires you have, such as credit card debts, saving for a home deposit or paying off a mortgage. At different stages of your life, you'll use this for different things, but the 20% should stay the same. The next bucket is for safety money, your rainy day fund. This is your emergency money. You only use it for real emergencies like losing your job or getting sick. And no, a really good deal on a Holloway getaway is not an emergency. Having this money on hand for emergencies will change the way you think about money. Once you know you're covered in case of an emergency, a weight will be lifted from your back. Hopefully by now, you'll already have 2000 in your account. If not, do whatever you can to find this money. Sell some stuff on Gumtree, freelance, do overtime, whatever it takes. The third and final bucket is for building wealth long term. The aim of this bucket is to get a little wealthier every day. Thanks to the wonders of compound growth, every dollar you put in this bucket should double every seven to 10 years. Now that might not sound like much, but over the course of your life, it can make you incredibly wealthy. This bucket includes your super fund and any other investments you own. For now, it might just be your super and that's completely fine. Your long-term wealth bucket is outside of the scope of this course. We're focusing here on getting you into your first home, but it's still a good way to think about your money. So what did we cover this week? One, we went through your money priorities. Two, we looked at your three money buckets. And three, we set up your automatic payments to your different accounts. Next week, we're gonna be tackling your debts. We'll take a look at the credit cards and the harm they do and you'll learn the five steps you need to take to domino your debts. Until then, catch you next time.